Where's my cappuccino? Breakfast, thank you. So this is a filmed interview? Yes. Okay, good. It's an interesting moment for me because I, with this exhibition of the Pompidou, it's given me a chance to look at my life's work. It's not a retrospective. I noticed that you can put an object I designed in 1981-82 with an object I designed today, like that. And they all look, they're, they're timeless, they're, you can't put a time on it. I did the go chair, which is the world's first injection molded uh, magnesium chair for Bernhardt Design in the USA. I didn't even visit them. I didn't want to know who they were, what they did. I just wanted to make that object. So I worked in Nuremberg, Germany, developed the technology using Audi's technology for the way they make the car wheels, where Peter Schreier had a design. And then I did the go chair, which has become a, a, an object which all the leading organic architects study, okay? At the same time, I worked on a series of uh, dinnerware. Do you know how difficult it is to make that? As to make a single surface object. But when you, when you hold it, that's what you get. You get elegance, because when you drink from a cup, you don't look at the cup. less, 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 price, everything. And it's this kind of eureka moment when everything kind of comes together and then you stop. It's like a tree. A tree grows and it stops. Why does it keep going? I mean, there's nothing in the way. It stops because of intrinsic forces and extrinsic forces. We're in a weird industrial moment, hybrid. But in the future, we will, you will never buy the same pair of shoes as somebody else. It's so ridiculous, because you've got different physiognomy. Wouldn't it be amazing if in the future we scan your hand and we mold you a bottle for your hand? I mean, it probably cost you a fortune, but... Anyway, it's an interesting thought. Yeah. It's provocation. This is something I did recently. It's for Kiko in Milan. It looks so valued. Is a, is a valuable thing, but it's also an industrial strategy that I'm developing for the brand. Mega success. This is a three-year window that they sell out in a month and a half. My father always said to me, you buy less but better. If you buy cheap, you buy twice. Money hard to earn, easy to burn. And then of course you've got the, the you have the bottle for mom. It's an industrial object made by hand, meaning it fits your hand. So what happens when you have a genetic code of a designer meeting with the gen genetic code of a, a, a brand? You're trying to find this sort of uh, nirvana, this moment where you, you everything fits. Material, weight, recycling, quality. It still keeps its aristocracy and nobility, but it's much more accessible. You know, that's the outside, that's before you even start drinking it and having a bit of fun. If you want to make a universal product, you have to have some adjustment. Uh, what about eyewear? I did uh, the physics collection. They were the first pair made super lightweight, made like a watch. And it adjusts to fit every face in the world because a nose like Gerard Depardieu is very different than a nose of, uh, you know, somebody in, in in Asia. Francis Bacon was an organic artist. I'm an organic designer, but Henry Moore, these people like Bacon and so on, were organic artists. I begin with art. Design is, is a secondary force. This is Ridon, which is the anagram of Rodin. Now, as you see it like that, it looks like maybe a motorbike. But if you do that, that's not a motorbike. It has no gravitational positioning. Now, what I do is I remove anything extraneous to produce fit, fat-free objects. I remove the material that I don't need. That, for me, is much more interesting looking than that one. And that's what you would get if you take it the full 
dimension. That's what evolution does, that's what logic does. And if we move into the future with 3D printing and that kind of stuff, it means that we will only use the right amount of material we require for the job. So there will be no waste. So that's a spoon. This is a very, very good illustration of the bottle. It's a spoon, but it's a bottle. Meaning, it deals with gestural elegance. Because one of the things that annoys me in life is people who eat badly. This is what spoons look like in the 16th century, so it has heritage, but it also has modernity to it, and it's a mono material. So when you have a new technology, you can have a new design. Okay? But now we have electric cars, there's no reason to have an air intake at the beginning, at the front, to cool the engine there's nothing to do. So that changes the design. In 2000, roughly, I started a water bottle for TNAT, which is a low-molded PET water bottle. That took me 14 months to design that. And it became instantly like an icon of water itself. And I had a dinner in, in Tokyo, I remember, when you could travel with water. And I had all the great Japanese designers and architects, my friend, for this dinner. And I gave them all a bottle of water and they loved it. <laughs>